All of these things that we've been observing should prompt some questions. So let's end this chapter by speculating. Let's just think. I'm going to illustrate things in the context of spinner systems, but almost everything that we talk about here is going to apply to driver type systems as well. Let's begin. The first question that you probably have is what happens if we have more than two agents? All of our analysis has really just covered what happens if we have two. This is not difficult to answer. Whether we have three agents or 13 agents, it doesn't matter if they are all influencing one another and if you use the type of coupling function that encourages consensus then the entire system will synchronize and the state difference the phase angle between all these spinners is going to go to zero and that is going to be a stable equilibrium for the entire system very well, but there's an assumption here that everybody is influencing everybody else. What happens if your agents are connected or coupled in different ways? This is where, for me, the subject gets so interesting. You could take the same set of agents and connect them up in a different way. Instead of all to all, you could do, say, nearest neighbor connections, where everyone only sees the state of their neighbors. Now, the cool thing is this system may also synchronize given the same sort of coupling function. You're going to get the same eventual stable behavior, and that's really cool. However, what happens is if you take two systems with the same number of agents and you wire them up in different ways, maybe with all to all on one side and with nearest neighbor connections on the other side, you may observe that they're both going to converge to a synchronized state. But what is the rate of that convergence? How is that going to differ? And it turns out that the more connected your system is, the faster you move to convergence. That's really cool. I wonder how you would prove something like that. Hmm. Now, depending on how you wire your agents together, if that underlying network has some interesting topology, in this case, something like a ring, then depending on the initial conditions, you might not converge to a synchronized state. You might, in this case, have waves that cycle around that underlying loop. Information might propagate in such a way that things never synchronize. This gets really close to topology. Oh, be still my heart. And now you're probably thinking, what happens if you just have a random network? If things are just wired up at random, where you have some regions of high density connections and other regions of low density connections. Well, if the entire system is connected, then you at least have a hope of everything synchronizing together. But you may have a lot of heterogeneity in terms of the rates of synchronization. More highly connected regions are going to transfer information more quickly. Dangling edges that are way off to the side, that might converge much more slowly. And these observations might cause you to ask, well, what happens if everything is changing over time? This previous situation reminds me a little bit of the fireflies. But in that system, everyone's flying around, and let's say that the underlying network is changing over time. It is here, of course, where everything that we have seen comes together and plays off of one another. You have different connectivities and different convergence rates associated to those degrees of connectivity, but you might also have some underlying topology in the region where things get disconnected over time, and then there's no way for information to spread. What happens if things get disconnected and then reconnected? What happens if you have some interesting topology, some loops that get formed? Maybe some waves start happening. If everything is changing over time, then all of these things come into play and one can get some very interesting phenomena. Phenomena that maybe match the way that information spreads around, I don't know, a social network or other interesting situations as well. There is so much amazing stuff that you can ask. 
coupled systems go much deeper than you might imagine. In order to answer all of the questions that we have raised here, we're going to need more mathematics. We're going to need linear algebra in particular. Spoiler alert, it's all eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Wait, what was that? Okay, for now, we need to stay in this volume, in this dimension, and finish out our story. But all of that good linear algebra is coming in later volumes.